So recently, after getting over a hundred trillion in damage against world boss Xanatus in King's Raid, I had some people ask me what my setup was for my characters. So I'm going to show you my setup in this video and also show you the battle. So for my tank, I'm using Shakma. I was using Loman for a tank, but when Shakma came out, I started using him for world boss number three. The reason for that is Shakma is also able to reduce heal rate. I think that Loman actually has a stronger physical amp, although Shakma's physical amp is still pretty strong. But his decrease of heal rate, I think, is what really makes him a better tank for this battle. I still find that Loman is better for world boss number two, though, than Shakma. But Shakma does really help for world boss number three. Another character I'm using is Rahartna, and if you've seen my other King's Raid videos, you know I really like Rahartna, and I find her to be very useful. I've tried using other characters in lieu of Rahartna, including Shia, including Evan, including Mei, but I find that Rahartna is better than all of them. And I just upgraded Rahartna's soul weapon to A2, so with an A2 soul weapon, she is, in addition to the other things she does, she will augment physical damage by 40%. So that gives an increased physical amp and that did help increase my damage in this battle. She's especially good when you have a physical DPS character. I also changed the perks that I'm using on Rahartna. Instead of using the perk that increases her attack and her defense, I used her tier two perks the one that increases everyone's critical damage and the one that increases everyone's attack speed. One of the recommended perks from Vespa is the perk that will increase her attack by 10%. With a lot of healers, attack actually does make the healers heal more, but that's not so much true with Rahartna. With Rahartna, how much attack she has doesn't really matter nearly as much as it does with other healers. That's why I was able to do without that perk. I also use her tier 2 dark perk whenever I have a physical DPS, and that's because that will increase physical damage by 25%. And I also use her tier 3 light perk. That will cause her tier 3 to apply to 6 of the characters rather than 4. I use that in battles with six or more characters, like world boss battles. And one of the things about her tier three is that it does reduce cooldowns. So in addition to Audi, who I'm also using, I have Rahartna reducing cooldowns. Another character I'm using is Priscilla. Priscilla is a warrior who is also capable of increasing the attack of the main DPS character. And it depends on how much attack she has. I know she lends about 15% of her attack to the main DPS character. I believe her S2 does that. So one thing I have done with Priscilla since last time is I am now using Galgoria gear. And the reason why I'm using Galgoria gear is a full set of Galgoria gear will increase her attack by 10%. Also, two of the additional skills I have on her Galgoria gear is the skill that will increase her attack by 2% every time she uses a skill up to 20 times. So that will boost her attack as well. I'm also using her perk that adds 50% of her physical defense to her attack. With Techno Magic Gear, one line of physical defense is just as good as one line of attack because the maximum attack you can have is plus 16% on TM gear, but the maximum physical defense you can have is 32%. So 32% would give her an extra 16% of attack. That's why I've got most of her stats focused on attack and physical defense and a few other stats. I had previously been using Siegfried gear on her. Siegfried gear on warriors increases the attack speed of the two characters with your highest attack. So that's why I'm now using the perk on both Rahartna and also Lavrel that increases everyone's attack speed to make up for the lack of attack speed boost I was getting from the Siegfried gear that Priscilla used to have. 
And speaking of Laval, yes, she is another character that I am using here. She's also the only character that I'm not using Techno Magic Gear on. That's because Laval will give 15% of her critical damage to the main DPS character. It would be possible to get Laval's critical damage to be even higher than it is with ordinary gear if you use Techno Magic Gear and all of the lines were critical damage and all four of the additional skills were the skill that increases her critical damage by 50%. But it would also take a little while to farm for that. So that's why I use ordinary gear on her because with ordinary gear, it's usually easier to get her critical damage to be higher. I'm also using Veronica. Veronica is a wizard that is also an NPC character that is very useful in boss battles and i'm using siegfried gear on veronica siegfried gear is pretty useful for wizards in supporting positions like veronica because siegfried gear on a wizard will increase the damage that all the characters do especially the damage that the main dps character does you notice i'm also using the solar stone with veronica the solar stone reduces the heal rate of the enemy Another item I could use is the Academic Achievement Award. I have a two-star Academic Achievement Award, which increases everyone's attack. But it seems like the Solar Stone is simply more effective for World Boss number three. Now, some people say, well, that really shouldn't be the case because I'm using three other characters, specifically Pansy, Fallen Frey, and Shakma, that also reduce the heal rate of the enemy. But the thing is, I'm using... Fallen Frey and Shakma in my subgroup, so I don't really control them manually. The only one of those three that I'm controlling manually is Pansy, and Pansy's S1 is the one that lowers heal rate, but I focus more on using Pansy's S3 because that's the one that really does a lot of damage. The Solar Stone will consistently lower heal rate, so maybe that's why it seems to work better in this battle. I'm also using Fallen Frey as a healer. She's an excellent character. I like using her a lot more than I like using Shia because for one thing, I don't have to use her manually and she's great in world boss battles. She has maybe the strongest shield in the whole game. It's a good idea to have her unique treasure too um, at four stars at least because that allows her shield to achieve 100% uptime. She also greatly augments the power of the DPS character and provides plenty of CC resist. It might be even better to have a 5-star unique treasure for her, especially since I'm using her on auto and not using her manually. But 4 stars is still pretty good. And then I'm using Panzerone. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. Most people just call her Pansy. For my main DPS character, she's one of the strongest physical DPS characters in the game and maybe the best DPS character for world boss number three. Um, you also can see I have her four star unique treasure. I also have her A2 soul weapon and I was able to upgrade her ether level from 18 to 19. That gives her more attack so that does make a big difference. I'm also using the three-star otherworldly sword, the Shakma artifact, as the artifact on her. And the otherworldly sword seems to be the artifact that augments the main DPS character the most for this particular battle. I'm using Galgoria gear on her, and three out of the four perks I'm using are the perks that will increase her damage by 3% every 15 seconds. The fourth perk I'm using is the one that increases her crit by 250. So even though it says her crit is 500, it's actually closer to 750. So without further ado, let's get into the battle. Now the Xanatus World boss battle is of course the shortest of the three world boss battles at three minutes. So you'll notice what I usually like to do is I usually like to wait until she does the Nightmare of the Abyss. That's when she's most vulnerable to use all four of the soul weapons that I control manually all at once, at least the first time. After that, I don't necessarily wait, but I usually like to wait to use all four of them all at once the first time she does that. So. That's why 
I'm waiting for the soul weapons to all charge, as you can see, and here she's about to do it. So, there. I'll use all four of the soul weapons. I'll also use Pansy's S1 before her S3, because her S1 will reduce the amount of healing Xanadus can do, as well as it also augments physical damage shortly after you use it. So that first time I actually did a pretty good job there, getting the timing perfect. Since two of the additional skills I have on Priscilla's gear are, is the skill that will increase her attack by 2% every time she uses a skill up to 20 times, I'm trying to use as many of Priscilla's skills as possible as quickly as I can so I can get to that 20 threshold and that way I will maximize the amount of attack that Priscilla has. Now I'm actually not counting but I am trying to use her skills as quickly as possible to get to that 20 skill usage mark as quickly as possible. So You'll notice I usually wait until Xanadus gets to the Nightmare of the Abyss to use Pansy's Soul Weapon at least. I don't necessarily wait for the others though. There, I just used Pansy's Soul Weapon during the Nightmare of the Abyss and I just hit her S1 before her S3. Which like I said will augment the amount of damage that her S3 does if you get her timing right. It's important to get the timing right because you could end up using her S1 and not really get a chance to use her S3. Sometimes my timing isn't quite perfect. But um, for Adi's Soul Weapon, I don't always wait until the Nightmare of the Abyss mode. Although sometimes I find that it's a good idea to wait even for him. But there I'm, I'm using... Looks like I can use all four soul weapons uh, this time around, once again. So that's pretty good timing right there. I used, yeah, pretty much all four. Maybe I would have done a little bit better if I had hit Pansy's S1 for her S3 right there. But overall, that was pretty good timing. I usually don't get too many chances to use all four soul weapons at once, except for the first time around. Um, you notice I haven't used Audie's Soul Weapon that much. Audie's Soul Weapon does take a long time to recharge. Of all the Soul Weapons that recharge based on time, I think he has one of the longest, if not the longest, recharge times. So, for that reason, I'm not always able to use his Soul Weapon as much. Or, you know, in order to use his Soul Weapon, I'm not always able to do it at a perfect time. But there, I did get to 102 trillion in damage. It says 102 in the top number. The bottom number will just show you how much I beat my previous score for the day. So the top number of 102 trillion is the most accurate right there. Special thanks to my Patreon associate producer, Jamie Joy. If you like this video, give it a like. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel, click the bell icon for notifications, and select all notifications. It really helps me out when you select all notifications. You can also catch me on Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter at ZorkMid123.